Hi everyone. The next problem we're going to look at is going to use some time series data of U.S. new car sales expressed in millions of dollars responding to a few different items. So the first thing we need to do in this problem is to actually do the time series regression. So I've pulled up a copy of the data into Excel and remember, your exact data might differ a little bit, but the approach is still going to be the same. So the first thing I'm going to do to approach this problem is that I'm going to conduct a simple linear regression model predicting sales by the year. And to do that, I go to the Data tab. I go to Data Analysis. I scroll on down to Regression click OK. My input Y range is going to be sales in millions and my input X is going to be year. So what this means is that I am predicting sales with the year. Now the first row of the data has labels so I'm going to click the labels box and really really super important in this assignment you want to make sure that you're printing out your residuals so you'll want to click this residuals box. Again, super important. This is the key to the rest of the assignment and completing the table in the assignment. So don't forget that. And once you've done that, you've set it up. I'm going to have it open in a new worksheet ply. I'm going to click OK. And these are my results. Up here we have the summary results of the regression model. And then down here in rows 22 through 34, we have the residual output. And what's important here, and I'm going to widen these rows just to make it a little bit easier to see what we're looking at. There we go. The first column is the predicted sales in millions of dollars. So this is the data you need to plug into the first column of your chart. Then the next column that you need to fill in are the residuals. That information is given to us. So we should gratefully accept this gift. And those are the first two of the five columns you need to populate in the table in the homework assignment. The next thing it asks for are the lagged residuals. Lagged residuals. What this basically means is that it wants the residual from the previous time period. And each one of our rows or observations reflects a time period. So here in cell D26, I want it to populate with the value from C25. So the residual from the year before is the lagged residuals for the current year. And I'm just going to copy that formula and I'm going to paste it down the rest of the column. Those are our lagged residuals. Then the next thing we need to do is calculate our the squared difference between these two residuals. So we'll call this column the squared difference. And for this we want to find the absolute difference between the two residual values that we have. And a simple way to do this is just to subtract column C from column D. I would suggest using the absolute values. And we want to square this difference, so I'm going to put brackets around this equation, drop a caret and the, and the number 2, and you can see that up here in my formula bar where I'm calculating the difference between the absolute values of these residuals, and then I'm squaring them. And I'm going to copy that formula, and I'm going to paste it down that entire column. 
The final thing that it's asking for that we need to calculate our Durbin-Watson statistic are the squared residuals. And the squared residuals are just the square root of the residuals that we have in column C. So to calculate these, I'm going to type in C25, because that's my first residual, and I'm going to square it. So I'm going to raise it to the second power. And I'm going to copy that formula all the way down to the bottom of my observations. Now to calculate the Durbin-Watson statistics, we need to divide the squared difference by the squared residual. So to get these values, we want to use the sum function. So sum, oh, we want to make sure we get all of the values in that column. And then I can just copy that formula and go over the next cell and paste it and find the value for the Durbin, for the Square, the sum total of the squared residuals. Then to find the Durbin-Watson statistic, and I'm just going to label it here, Durbin-Watson statistic is the sum of squared differences divided by the sum squared residuals. So then, now that we have the Durbin-Watson statistic, we need to determine if we have enough of a sample here or enough information to consider this a reliable trend that we can use to estimate values over time. And a really handy table for this is in Appendix B-9 in the textbook, but It is also present in the ebook in the chapter that you're looking, that you're using to gather this information. So the Durbin Watson statistics section is 18 6. And I'll just drag it over to the window here. So this is the Durbin Watson statistics section. And this is a lot of information on how we do these calculations. And in fact, that calculation for the Durbin-Watson statistic that we just did is summarized in this equation. And then there's enough information in this table to tell us what we need to know because we're working with 10 observations. And here we can decide, given a sample size of 10 with one independent variable uh, to determine whether or not we can accept or reject our null hypothesis. So compare your Durbin-Watson statistic to what you see in this table. And if what you think you need, you don't see here, you can always go to appendix B.9 and you can find the solution there. And that should do the trick and help you navigate through this question about US car sales. I hope you found it helpful and don't forget to reach out if you run into any trouble at all working on this problem.